This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're gonna to take a look at El Dorado. But before that, this video is brought to you by Nicola Brono and Avery Wilkinson. Thank you for being farm barons. So the El Dorado map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. The El Dorado map is a Brazilian map based on the city of Protopopolis in San Paulo. The name of this map comes from the farm that gave rise to the city. Become a successful new farmer, growing from just an employee to a large, renowned farmer in the region. Be a part of history. This map has 105 purchaseable lands, 67 small to large fields, all of which feature missions. Work with coffee farming and sell your production or process it into roasted coffee. Now, a little caveat on that, you will need to place a coffee roasting production facility if you do want to roast that coffee. At the shop, you can make your purchases and repair your vehicles, or you can take your vehicles to a repair shop across from the gas station. Your grain production in general, as well as potatoes and beets, can be sold at two warehouses present on the map, where Warehouse 2 also gives you the possibility of unloading to the train. There are also multiple train selling cities on this map, and with respect to the sugar plant, you do have the ability of selling your sugar via the train. Bales in general, cotton and wool, are accepted at the cotton gin. It is possible to sell various products in the city market. The sawmill will accept wood. It's also capable of selling milk at the dairy, or you can purchase the dairy and produce your products. If you need limestone, then there is a limestone buy point. Now, the description makes reference to getting rid of stones. But I do have a little bit of a problem with that because there isn't a stone trigger at the limestone area. So I'm not really sure what the description means about that. And when you start out the map, you do start in the town, basically with your house. Now, let's go ahead and load on in. This map does have some required mods. So those required mods are the barbed wire fence and wooden gate, the Brazilian fences pack, as well as the wired fences and rail gate. So in addition to those three required mods, we are going to be making use of additional mods like we do during our videos, which is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, food calculator, precision farming, and the straw harvest add-on. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main starting area is exactly how you see it here in new farm mode, with the exception you do not own any farmland. You do have, of course, different bank balances, and you do start out with the same starting machinery in all game modes. The only difference is, of course, you do not own the land. Now, I will say also that if you load this map up in a low-end system, maybe a system with integrated graphics, you shouldn't have too many issues in running the system at 60 frames per second. If you take a look at my video that I recently republished related to graphic settings for lower end systems, I ran around the map quite a bit with that system and I was able to maintain a fairly steady 60 frames per second, even here in town where there is quite a bit of things to render. In fact, I did unlock the frame rates and I was getting upwards to 90 and 100 frames out in the kind of rural areas. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map itself. We start off by owning a farmhouse down here in the lower southeast corner, farmland ID 86. There's also a ton of viable farmlands here in town. So if you don't like that farmhouse, you can sell it and basically put up residence in any of these other small farmhouse areas. In addition, pretty much every piece of land on this map can be purchased, with the predominant thing on the map being Farmland ID 39, which is a huge sugarcane processing facility. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have black bean and coffee beans as added crops. And if you are playing with the premium expansion, then you do have red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much 
is that farmland going to cost us? We can then go and cross reference the farmland information here with the actual field information by taking a look at our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. As you can see, our fields are going to range anywhere from less than one hectare in size all the way up to, I think I saw one that was 14.42 hectares. I've seen a couple in the six and seven hectare range as well. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the generic soil map is being applied to these fields. So as you can see here, the fields to the north as well as south of the sugarcane plant are basically going to be a combination of all the various soil types in loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. Let's go and take a look at our crop counter. We do have a custom crop counter, and this has been reconfigured to reflect the Southern Hemisphere. So do note that when you do load up this map, you are starting in February as opposed to the typical August month. And as such, we have quite an interesting crop counter here overall. There is no growth of barley, canola, or oat at all on this map if you do play with the crop calendar enabled. We've got quite an interesting plant and harvest schedule for corn. And I would have to say we probably maybe have the ability of double cropping on this map, but it's going to take a little bit of studying to verify that. But it looks like maybe you could harvest your soybeans and then plant sorghum and then get that off the field again and then plant your soybeans back and basically just keep cycling around. We also look like maybe you could plant your corn and harvest your corn as well once you got the soybeans off the field. So if you are looking for kind of a unique change in how you work your fields, this map might be an interesting option for you because of such a unique crop counter that it does offer. If we take a look at our prices screen, you can see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basic crops that are available to us in FS22. In addition, you do have the ability of selling your eggs, wool, and milk, as well as your silage, hay straw, and grass. As we continue down through all the base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items, which is always a good thing to see on any map that is a part of FS22. We do have the ability of buying bulk line, but as I said in the intro, there isn't a location on this map where you're going to be able to sell your stones. The description makes reference to the sawmill. It says, do you need to get rid of your stones that were removed from your crops? Simple. Go to the limestone company. It's not that simple. I'm going to show you when we get down to the limestone company that there really isn't an unload trigger. I did try to unload stones where I thought it logically would work, but no, it did not end up working. We do have a sell point for coffee beans as well as black beans. We have a sell point for ethanol at the gas station. And our sugar is going to be available for sale at the supermarket or at a train sell point. And then we have roasted coffee as well. But if you do want to roast your coffee, you will need to place your own coffee roasting production that is included with the map. Now, with respect to the platinum expansion productions, we do have the ability to sell all of the platinum expansion productions as well, which is something that I always like to see because those of us that have invested in the platinum expansion, well, you know what? It is nice to be able to make use of that on maps other than Silver Run Forest. We do have the ability to sell all of our premium expansion productions as well as crops as well. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. We also have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets if you are playing with the straw harvest add-on. And then we do have our sell point again for the premium crops of red beets, carrots, and parsnips. We start out with a very, very well used 1986 pickup truck. And that is the only thing that we start out with. So be very, very cautious with respect to your spending of money because, well, you don't have any starting machinery. And to that end, it may be wise to start in farm manager mode, which will maximize your bank account. You still have access to the pickup truck. You can easily pick where you want to have your farmhouse and buy that. Then you'll have plenty of money to buy additional fields as well as equipment. We do not have any animals pre-placed on this map. This map does have contracts available. We do not own any of the production chains available on this map at the start. And this map does not have any collectibles. 
At this point, we would typically show you the starting machinery. Well, it is going to be the 1986 pickup truck, as we referenced. We will be checking out the mods and DLCs because we do have a custom trailer that is built into the map, and this has been set up to support the ethanol. So if you do want to haul ethanol, you will need to use the MKS32 semi-trailer that has been configured for that that is included with the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at build mode because, like I said, we do have some custom items built into build mode and specifically that is going to be the production of our coffee so you have that we have our coffee factory here that we can place down anywhere and then be able to take our coffee beans and further process that into roasted coffee everything else should be fairly standard but we'll just go ahead and take a quick look down through here This map does have coffee, and as such, you will have the ability of placing coffee trees, just like you would place your grapes and olives. Standard animal areas. And then as far as our ground textures, we do have some custom ground textures here. as well as some custom foliage. Now, as far as our farm tour goes, well, it's gonna be pretty simple as well. You're looking at it. This is our farmhouse and our farmhouse does have a wardrobe trigger as well as a sleep trigger. We can sell this farmhouse if we should so wish. And that is our starting farm. Now the land that we do own kind of extends down here a little bit below the farmhouse. So in theory, you can maybe put a small shed down here, but you would need to clear the land a little bit in order to do so. Let's get a little bit of an aerial look here on the map. We have our town, and again, we can pretty much buy any of these houses or plots of land in town, and then basically make that our home base, if you will, or possibly sell those houses and put some additional things down we have our case dealer located here and the case dealer does not open up until 8 or sorry 9 a.m so if you do load this map up and you try to get started immediately with respect to buying your machinery you will need to wait till 9 a.m in order for the dealer to open up now we've advanced the time to nine o'clock you see the gates open up and the door opens up to the dealer we do have our dealer trigger inside the building. And then in order to basically get to the maintenance trigger, we're going to have to come in here into our maintenance shop. We have our dealer trigger located right here at the maintenance shop. And then our maintenance trigger is going to be in the bay and it's going to extend outside the bay a little bit. So if you do have large machinery that for whatever reason won't fit within the door there, you will still be able to buy, sell, trade, repaint, and such here at the dealer. Got a fairly large area for our starting machinery to spawn in at as we buy that and a fairly wide exit gate in order to get out of here. So you shouldn't have too much issue in buying just about any size machinery that is available for the game. Now, with respect to production being built in, we have two productions built in. We have the large sugarcane plant as well as the dairy. We then, then can place also the coffee roasting facility, but it is not pre-placed. We have a second dealer trigger located right here, and it is across the street from the fuel station. So if you don't want to have to run into town, you do have access to that. And then at the fuel station, we can, of course, buy our diesel there, and this is where we're going to be selling our ethanol. The map is overall fairly flat, but it does kind of slope to the north a little bit. You shouldn't have too many issues with respect to using tractors and vehicles that maybe are a little undersized as compared to 
what the vehicles or what the implements are saying they need. Coming over here to the southwest corner of the map. This is where we are going to have our animal dealer. I do like seeing animated cows and other animals at animal dealers. So here we have our dealer trigger. If we do go and build out a farm somewhere, we do put down some animals. We will have the ability to haul those animals to and from the animal dealer. Making our way north a little bit from the animal dealer, we have our cotton cell point. For our cotton modules and round bales. You see the trigger marker located right here. And then this is going to be the limestone facility. And we do have two areas where we can buy lime. So both of those will work in order to purchase lime. And the logical place to unload stones would have been right here. And I did bring a wheel loader over here when I was prepping and testing the map before doing the video. And I was not successful in being able to unload into this location until I purchased the land. And when I purchased the land, all it did was it basically just dumped stones down on top of this. It did not actually process that. If we take a look at our triggers, you'll see we do not actually have a trigger located here. So this is not going to accept stones ever. And if we further look around this area four triggers, you're going to see the only triggers that are going to be here are the two unload triggers. So at no point at this facility do we have a trigger. None of these doors have triggers in order to open them. So I'm not really sure why the description makes reference to the ability of getting rid of our stones at this facility because it just isn't going to work out. Something I think is really well done is the way these roads come on and off the exits off the main road. The map flows very, very well from a road standpoint. So this is going to be our second grain warehouse. And at our second grain warehouse, we have one dump area marked. And then the other dump area is not marked. If we pull our triggers back up again, you're going to see that we do have a unload trigger like located right there. And we also have one unlocated right here. I will tell you that the trigger on the right is going to be to unload into the train warehouse. The trigger on the left is going to be to sell product. So if you wish to put product on the train or store product, at the silo, you want to use the right unload point. If you wish to sell product, you're going to want to use the left one. And I'm a little, a little confused why we don't have signage reflecting that because that can really confuse the player, in my opinion, as to what's going on here. If they want to store or want to sell their grain, why when they unload it, they're not getting any money. And then why when they maybe unload it, they do get money when they thought they were going to be putting it on the train. Over here we have our train loading point. And we have then the trigger to call the train and rent it. In fact, we have our train coming by right now. Custom blue train skin. And then across the shop from that, we have our sawmill. The sawmill is simply a wood cell point. It is not a production point at all. So we have our wood cell dump point and wood cell trigger located right there. We have another train rent activation trigger located right there as well. Now let's loop over here to our dairy. 
The dairy is a milk sell point, and if you purchase the dairy, it is also a production point. So we have our interactive icon, our unload point, and our pallet spawn point for the dairy. Now across the street from the dairy, we have this massive sugarcane factory. And this is really the predominant aspect of this map. And the triggers are very, very widespread. So it could be a little confusing to the player as to where you do what. So we will be pointing those out. We have a slurry buy point located right here. So if you want to purchase slurry, which would be the output of the sugarcane processing, well, you have the ability of bringing your slurry tanker over here and loading it up there. We have our interactive icon for the ethanol plant located here. And then this is going to be the unload point to unload the ethanol that is produced. So once you start producing ethanol and sugar, you're going to bring your ethanol trailer over here underneath that pipe. And that's where you're going to fill that trailer up with ethanol. Now, we'll tell you the productions on this map are very expensive. The dairy is $600,000 to buy, and the sugarcane plant is $1.5 million. Now, as far as where do you bring the sugar, where you're going to have to come in to the facility, make your way around to here, and continue on through another gate over to this point. And this is where you are going to unload your sugar cane into the sugar plant. There will be a pop-up that will pop up here basically once you purchase the sugar plant. Now, as far as how do you get rid of your sugar? Well, sugar, as best as I can tell, only is able to be put onto a train. And this is where you're going to be able to park your train and load the sugar up that the sugar plant produces onto the train and then, then drive that train off into a train cell point. And we do have our train activation trigger located here as well. So you'll be able to transport your ethanol via a semi-trailer over here. And then you're going to be able to transport your sugar via a train from right there. And again, you're going to load the facility up with sugarcane from this point right here. And the rest of the facility, well, it's just all decoration. Like you say, it's a massive, massive facility that is very, very prominent on the map. And the way... It, at least the way I saw it is I kept thinking, oh, there must be more going on here. But there isn't. It's pretty straightforward. Just a few select triggers here and there. And you can see how the map kind of rises up in the north as opposed to the south. And that is pretty much El Dorado. So let's run through our scoring metric. We're giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We have sugarcane plant and the dairy pre-built into the map. And we have then the ability to place a coffee roasting facility to roast coffee if we wish to further process any coffee that we have planted and then further harvested. There is coffee products available on the Giants Mod Hub. So you will want to go ahead and check that out. I'll go ahead and try to link to a couple of those down in the description below. With respect to the ability to sell all of our grain, production points, and animal outputs, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our production points, animal outputs, and such. And with respect to can the farm be customizable? Well, yes, indeed it can because technically the only thing that we do have that would qualify as a farm at the start is going to be our farmhouse. We can sell the farmhouse, so therefore it is completely customizable. Any other aspects you're going to want to build out yourself. And I suspect, given the size of that sugarcane factory, you could just go ahead and make that your farm 
or you could buy something like this field located right here, field 45, and make it into kind of your farm if you're willing to have it down here close to town. We also have this area over here, which is currently unmarked, that is viable. Let's go ahead and just see how much this one's going to cost you. Farmland ID 47, $91,824. And that could buy, you could clear that off. And that could also be a perfectly good spot to start your farming operation. Buildings where I probably are using the new texturing technique. I did take a look at several of these custom buildings. And I do feel that they are indeed using that new texturing technique. So we're giving the map a full point there as well. In fact, the only spot we're going to take anything off with respect to the point is going to be trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked because again over at warehouse number two we do have two locations of unloading our grain one is for storage or transfer to the train the other is for selling and i don't feel that they are completely marked to be fully transparent as to what's going on this is the first warehouse and this is going to be a sell point as well this is the only thing you can do here. This is not a train transfer silo as well. So this is just going to be exclusively for selling your grain. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to El Dorado. Like I said, we're going to give the map 4.75 out of 5. We've given a lot of maps that score as of late because so many of them are coming oh, oh, so close to getting the perfect 5.0 but just missing ever so slightly in one or two elements. And until next time, happy farming.